Hi, Aaron. How are you doing? I'm um, good, apart from seeing your dart score. Oh, mate, don't you bring it up as well, please. I've been battered by it. Listen, Madison only scored four with his first two darts. Well, yeah, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. We're live on Sky Sports News now as well, so you've, <laughs> you've done me again. Um, listen, congratulations on the call-up. This is your first World Cup. How special does it feel? It's hard to put into words, really. Um, especially with it being a World Cup at this time of the year. Um, it's all sort of being thrust upon us like quickly. Obviously, the last game of, of the Premier League and then straight into this. But, um, yeah, it's, I think once that first game gets kicked off on uh, Sunday, I believe, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be mega. Tell me about the heat shack. We've seen the tent on the side of the pitch. And, and I think you guys have nicknamed it the, the Heat Shack, is that right? Is that what it, right, okay. Um, but yeah, that's more for the players. Thank you. Um, the outfield players, I guess. Yeah. yeah, so we've been over there a couple of times, but it's just nice for a bit of shade and it's obviously got the sort of drier air type thing to, to cool you down, which is great. And, you know, the guys have got a lot of, um, a lot of stuff, sort of ice packs, ice vests, which, which we can use when we're resting, so... Um, it's just something which can hopefully give us the added boost. Has it surprised you how hot it is and, and, and could that be a factor? Um, no, I knew it was going to be hot, obviously. Um, you know, been to Dubai on numerous occasions for football or on holiday, so I knew it was going to be hot, but um, I think ad ad adapting to it quick will be the difficult thing, obviously. Um, for us, it's normally going into Christmas, uh, dark nights and dark mornings, so... Um, how quickly we can adapt to the, to the weather is, is crucial for us. I wanted to ask you about the competition for places because um, you've been in extraordinary form for, for Arsenal this season. Seven clean sheets, I reckon, in the Premier League already. And yet, Jordan Pickford is squad number one and he's been there for the last two major tournaments. Um, so how do you see that competition, particularly amongst the goalkeepers? Uh, fair. Um, I see it. As it is, obviously, squad numbers are our squad numbers. Um, he's done extremely well for England, and he's been in fine form for Everton as well. Um, and so is Nick. Um, it's not just me who's racking up the clean sheets. Pope is as well. So, um, you know, we've got a great bond between the goalkeeping group, especially, um, and Marge looks after it really well. Um, you need all three of us to, to train properly to, to get the number one to its best. So... Um, we're all training like a number one at the minute, um, and then it will be difficult for two of us to, to try and flip the switch and, and help out, but it's something which me and Popey, and a little bit less Jordan, but me and Popey definitely have done before. So um, whoever gets that first game um, will have full support from the group, and then you never know with tournament football, anything can happen, and you've just got to be ready if, if called upon. Hi, Aaron. Uh, Hi. Alex Howell, BBC. Uh, how do you feel about the way your career is going at the moment, top of the Premier League with Arsenal and now coming away to your first World Cup? Yeah, um, obviously there's, there's times where um, you have them pinch yourself moments and um, you speak to your my mum and dad or my missus and you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good place to be in, especially after the, the first few years of my career learning learning my trade and difficult situations, um, sort of getting writ off and, and whatnot. So um, it's really enjoyable at the minute and um, it's sort of that hard work you, you reap your rewards for. And um, I'm here now and um, that doesn't mean anything, to be fair. So I've got to try and keep going to, to either get into the team and, and stay here. How would you look back on those hard times now? Does it make, it, make all those times worth it? Yeah, 100%. Um, I've learned so much in terms of different experiences, you know. Um, I'm now learning the side of the game of being towards the top of the table, um, playing in bigger games, playing in Europe, being in the England squad. Um, but these tough moments where, you know, certain, certain people uh, have a different outlook and I've been able to see from the other side. Um, and you, it's a game of football, so... I've been able to live my life as well. Um, I think if I was 
too emotionally involved with the football, I'd, I'd have struggled to, to mentally carry on. So um, it's something which I really needed. Um, I wouldn't have liked to have happened twice, but it did. Um, but yeah, now I'm sitting here and I have sort of that strong backbone, which, um, which fundamentally is my base. And your dad we saw in the Arsenal documentary is really involved in your career and seemed quite emotional when you play. What was his reaction when you got called up to this squad and how do you think he'll cope if you do take to the field? Um, I think there's, a, there's definitely a few tears shed um, from him. Um, I think if I actually make it on the pitch, I think he might not return home. I think he might have a heart attack, but... Um, you know, it's special for my family and especially f for my mum and dad who have drove up and down the country, flied all around the world. So, um, so yeah, he'll be, he'll be by, he won't have any nails left, let's put it that way. Hi Aaron, Jack Pitbrook from The Athletic. Um, there's always a lot of speculation at the start of every World Cup about the ball. Have you guys been training with the World Cup ball and how has it felt to you? Yeah, um, it's probably one of the better better Adidas balls which I've played with. Um, I wasn't, I've never felt another World Cup ball, so I can't go off that. But um, I played with Adidas balls before and the European Championship balls and stuff. So it seems fine to me. It seems like it's got better for goalkeepers as well as keeping it uh, for the strikers. Um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be there'll be lots of saves, but also lots of goals as well. Have Marge or Gareth or anyone said anything to you about issues that have happened with previous balls like the Jabalani in 2010? No, no, no. That, um, that's obviously in the past and um, everything changes now. So um, we trained with it a couple, a couple camps ago. Um, so we got used to it then. And then obviously being with Arsenal, being Adidas, we've had time to test it as well for FIFA. Um, so I've had quite a lot of exposure to the football. Hi, Aaron. Mark from PA Media. Um, in terms of how you're playing with Arsenal at the moment, you're playing out from the back and Mikel's put a lot of faith in, in you and the, the players. Does that work when you come away with England and Gareth is asking something similar? Does that make that transition from club to international football a bit easier for a goalkeeper? Yeah, it definitely helps. Um, it won't be the same style, but it's still the principle is the same. You still play in the same way um, it was definitely a lot more difficult when I was younger playing for uh, when I was coming through the academy at Sheffield United in League One playing longer and then coming to the youth ages at England and you have to play out that's a lot more difficult um, but what's great now is all three goalkeepers are playing um, and the other two might not play to the extent which Arsenal do but they're all asked to to play out so when we come here it's it is easier to transition and, and 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 work our way into into the training week i think it's fair to say 18 months ago when you went to the euros you you maybe just squeaked into that squad you'd just been relegated from the premier league now do you feel like a, a bona fide member of the squad and, and is your mindset different now you come here as, a, as a, a member of a team that's five points clear at the top of the table yeah i think so i think i was First of all, very fortunate to be in the Euros team anyway through um, an injury to Dean, um, which was unfortunate for him, but allowed me to go and experience it. And yeah, at that point, I just not felt like a spare part, but I was there to enable the, the team to carry on training with a full squad. And now you come here now and you're in the same sort of conversation of playing or not playing and you definitely feel like, a, as you said, I cemented myself into the squad at this moment in time. And um, obviously that can get taken away as quickly as I got it. But um, at this World Cup, I do feel like a, a strong member of the squad. Hi, Aaron. James Olley from ESPN. Um, I just want to ask you about Bukayo Saka. Um, after what he went through following the Euro final, you've obviously seen it for club and country, how he's processed that. Could you just talk a bit about how he's handled it from, from your perspective? Um, Trying to find the right words. Um, impeccably, probably. Um, 
the kid the, the kids a lovely a lovely boy um has time for everyone works super hard throughout every every week um very very rarely misses a training session and he used all that motivation um of criticism but also more so the love which everyone gave him gave him an extra boost and um don't forget he had sort of the pressure of the whole football club on him last year um sort of him and emil smith row were our two sort of main guys and he's dealt with that he's dealt with everything else and he's thriving now and I can't wait to see him take this stage and, and thrive, on, thrive over here. Mikel talked a lot about how you, um, the players, sort of supported him through that. What sort of role did you play in that? More through the criticism side. Um, it's probably the first time he received it. Um, obviously, I'd, as we touched on, I got relegated and signing for Arsenal was a difficult period. Um, so I was able to sort of talk him through that and and also when when we missed out on the top four and he felt like it was all his fault because he couldn't provide for us, um, I was just able to help him reflect that the season before they finished eighth, this season we finished fifth. And if we go another step, step again, um, we'll be in the top four. So it's that perspective of it's a game of football and there's a lot more to it. It's obviously an awful thing for him to go through, but do you feel he's a stronger character sort of for it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's there's no doubt about that. Um like on off the pitch and on it, he's he's more a complete person. And just on a completely different topic, we're asking a few goalkeepers about how they got into it, you know, growing up. We, did you always want to be a goalkeeper or did it choose you or did you choose it? No, I wanted to get as much mud on my clothes as possible, so <laughs> goalkeeping was 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 that um, the way forward for me? And yeah, I played in goal, played outfield for for school and stuff, and enjoyed it with my friends. But yeah, from seven, six, seven, I was a goalkeeper. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hello. Hiya. How are you? <laughs> you were talking about the tough times and um, coming up through the leagues yourself and Ben White now in an England World Cup squad. Can you talk us through those early moments of your career and sitting down and watching telly together and what it means now to be in a World Cup squad, a lot of people have heard this story, but the details, please. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I was just an 18, 18 year old kid who moved to Bournemouth on my own. Um, his family are from around there, and, and luckily, one of my friends from Bournemouth at the time went on loan to Newport with him. We became really close and spent Saturday nights out partying and Sunday. <laughs> Sunday afternoons watching movies at my flat in Bournemouth so um, it started like that and we all s we went to sort of the same league at the same time played against each other and it's it's just one of them crazy things um, you kind of feel like you'll mm, lose touch with them people you've only probably been with them for three years and then I move and he's at Brighton and and then somehow you're in the England squad together at the Euros. You then sign for the club at the same time, and then you're here. It's it's special, and it's special to have that person, which every single day you know I can pick up on his feelings, he pick up on mine. So um, if we're down or you need space, whatever, it's it's that one person who you're closest to. What are the odds on that? <laughs> yeah, very slim. Um, Probably less slim than Mason and Declan, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I reckon we're up there. Bromance off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bromance off, yeah. Um, in, and like, can you describe what's happening in that hotel? I've been told it's uh, lots of outdoor spaces, um, despite the heat. That's all. Can you explain to us what it's like? Because we can't get in there. Cause security is a bit tight. <laughs> no, it's it's lovely. What the 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 FA and the team behind the team have done for us. Um, We've got a basketball net up, which gets played a lot. Um, there's big screens around for movies or I'm a celeb and things like this if, if the lads are up at that time. Um, big tents where all the massages are. So there's a real good sort of like a little village almost inside the, the, the walls. Um, we're having so much fun already and um, 
it's just great that, as I said, the team behind the team have, have done so well for us. And um, it's really keeping us at home, fine touches of photos and, and things in our rooms, our family. So um, it means the world, yeah. Inflatables out already? They were out today. Um, so the pool at the hotel is not as big as the one here. So the, the unicorns, I'm pretty sure I've seen Bakayo on it again in Declan. So there might be some pictures of them coming out. <laughs> Scooped you, FA. Um, <laughs> and I want to talk about a bit, bit of football. Who do you think is the uh, toughest player you've ever faced? Oh. Um... I've always said Jamie Vardy I've hated playing against because he n never gives up. I remember playing against him for Bournemouth and we were 4-1 up about three minutes ago and he was still charging me down on a back pass. Um, and the other is probably Aguero. I only got to play him the once, but I think he had three chances and scored two. So you can never sort of write him off. He was always poaching in and around the box. So I'll say Jamie Vardy. And... We know Iran are incredibly tough defensively. Probably have five, five, a good five at the back. <laughs> so uh, set pieces are going to be important. How are penalties going? We, uh, we haven't done any with uh, goalkeepers at the minute. Um, we have something which is called a skills net where the, the corners are, are open at the moment. Um, I think the lads are just working on sort of the technique. Um, I think it can become detrimental if they're taking them against goalkeepers because we then start to know where they're going and we can start to gamble a little bit especially when we don't want to get scored on all the time so the the later rounds I think we'll start seeing them introduced into more pressure pressurized ones with the goalkeepers he's giving Harry the run for the money in terms of goal scoring abilities because I know there's a fear of being too reliant on him but you're up against that whole strike force in England how powerful are they very powerful. Um, I think if you take the front four out and change it with another front four, I don't think the, the levels would drop at all. Um, of course, we need Harry to be scoring, but we also need 14 other players to hopefully chip in. Um, Marcus has come back into the squad and looks a breath, breath of fresh air, and Bakayo's carrying on his form. Everyone's got the bit, bit between their teeth. Um, so everyone wants to play that first game. So training is intense. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take a few over here now. Jerry? Hi, Aaron. Jerry Cox from Haters TV. Um, just want to go back to 2018. I, I believe you've been at Chesterfield on loan. I just wonder where you were watching the World Cup and what your reactions were when, say, Eric Dyer put that penalty away against Colombia and so on. Um, so I was, yeah, it was the summer. So it was the summer, so I was in Ayanapa watching the first game at Lineker's Bar with my friends. Uh, that was crazy, because obviously hate, hate, hate scored the, the last minute header. That was an eventful night. Um, I watched one at a fan zone in Weymouth, and then the Columbia game I watched with, it was like the day before pre-season, so I was with my group of friends who, me and Ben White know round, round their house, and. Yeah, as you can imagine, there was um, a lot of cheering in the front room. And um, yeah, you st I still get goosebumps now of thinking I weren't even there. And it was a real special night. Hey, Aaron, it's Joe Wardrop here from ITV News. Um, I appreciate you and the rest of the squad were unlikely to enjoy a Budweiser at, the, uh, at any of the stadiums. Uh, <laughs> but is this a bit of a shame for the traveling fans? Or is there more to football than beer? Um, I think the fans will find some way of, of having a beer. I don't think you need to do it so much at the, at the game. Hopefully, with, um, with them not being able to drink, we can perform on the pitch to give them that sort of excitement and, and buzz. Um, but we also have to respect the rules and, and continue to work. So we'll put pressure on ourselves to, to entertain from, from the football pitch. I'm Pierre from Newspaper Lekip. Uh, I got the feeling that since six months ago, England w was one of the very favorite of the World Cup. No, it's not that clear because of the result of the League Nations. So I was wondering in which extent the recent result of England has affected the confidence of the squad. Uh, 
no confidence has been effective, affected. If anything, it's given us more motivation. Um, you know, you talk about teams coming to the World Cup for the first time in a long time or added motivation for them to play England, but we've got added motivation to turn our form around and, and put them results behind us. So um, we're going into this with fuller confidence, um, knowing how good we are. Hi, Aaron. Joe from Sky News. Um, you've come a long way from Chesterfield when I was interviewing you then. Um, Arsenal top of the league. Is there an extra area of confidence with yourself and the other Arsenal members of the squad walking around? And has there been any banter between yourselves and some of the Manchester City players and others? Um, it's obviously a lovely position that we sit in and... Um, I think our confidence is just high because of obviously what's happened so far and where we are right now. Um, the banter has mostly come from Connor Cody um, and Trent. They keep walking around pretending I've keep I've said five points clear every every day, um, just trying to trying to wind me up. But um, it's how it, it is healthy at the minute. Um, but no one's really thinking too much about it. Obviously, um, we're all training really hard, and I think the, the Premier League side of it's been put on the back burner, um, as you can imagine. But um, you know, the conversations about Premier League have have died off, which I didn't think would happen as soon. But that's obviously good for the group that we're focusing on a run so quickly. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll end the live section there.